Hi, it's Nell, and thank you for joining me on my side patio on this lovely morning. I have something to talk to you about that's not really pretty or beautiful, but it's very useful. It's plant pests. And if you have plants, at some point they're going to get infested with pests. It's just how it goes, whether they're in the house or in the garden. So I'm going to talk about them two by two because if I did the uh, six most common plant pests, what I think are the six most common plant pests all at one, it'd be all at one time, it'd be like. So today I'm going to start with aphids and mealybugs. And there is a blog post to go along with each of these videos. There will be pictures of the pests in there on different plants so you can see what they look like in case you're a little bit confused. Um, do I have white fly or do I have aphids? You will be able to get a very clear picture in the blog post. Aphids seem to appear out of nowhere in the spring. They uh, multiply like crazy. One day you can have five and then it, five days later it seems like you have 500. I have them on my grapefruit, my mint, and my Hoya topiary. And there's the underside of the leaf there. Crawling with them, oops. I better get spraying. And I noticed this too on my mint, which is coming back beautifully. You can see the ants crawling on the mint. There's actually some green aphids on there. So again, they're after that secretion. And aphids seem to love the tender new growth. Now, both aphids and mealybugs are soft-bodied sucking insects. And what they do is they suck the sap out of a plant. And you can think of the sap as sort of the blood of the plant. And the aphids love the sugar that's in the sap. And they can't ingest it all. So it sort of oozes out and there's this sugar all over the plant. And that is what ants are attracted to. So if you ever see ants on a plant, it's not that they're um, on the plant just because they're, oh, you know, I'm gonna go visit this plant. They are after the sugar that the aphids secrete. And the other thing that this um, sap causes is a black residue that's actually a sooty mold or it's a fungus and it grows on the sugar. So over time, you might see the spots of the plant starting to turn black. And that is the, uh, the fungus growing on the sugar that came from the sap. And that black sooty mold, that fungus that's left on the plant, it can ultimately damage the plant too. So you wanna make sure to get that off also. And the, uh, once the aphids are gone from a plant, then the ants will be gone too. Now aphids come in a lot of different colors. They ad adapt to their environments, as you will see in the post and in this video too. Orange, green, gray, brown, black, and there is even a pinkish aphid too. And if they're left on a plant for too long, what they do is they stunt the growth and they can also mutilate the flowers. Um, I grew up back east, back in New England, and we had a row of peonies in front of our house. And the aphids and the ants would be like all over the, all, all over the peonies. So I would just go wash them all, all off uh, before the flowers got stunted or mutilated because who wants peonies when you can't have the flowers? Now where you want to look for aphids on your plant is on the new growth. That's why in spring they appear, they're on that nice fresh growth. Um, also on the stems, that's where they were of my, on my mint. And they can also hide out under the, under the leaves because insects love to hide out under there too. And you want to catch it before the infestation gets too bad because they're easy to control at first. But if you let it go too long, they breed and they breed and breed and you'll get a really bad infestation and it 
hard to get rid of. So one way to get them under control is with natural predators. And that would be either ladybugs or lacewings are probably the two most common ways to do that. You can release them in your garden. Another way is my favorite way, and that is with the garden hose. And if your plant is not outside, then you can use this spray in your kitchen or in your bathroom to just sort of blast the aphids off. What you're going to see is me blasting the aphids gently off of my Hoya in the next clip. Okay, so I have my Hoya over here all set to spray. And I moved it over here because uh, for two reasons. I don't want to get the sliding glass door all sprayed up. And I'm in the desert, so every little bit of water that can go on to another plant is good. So I'm also spraying the plumbago too. So this one had a lot of aphids on it, so I'm just getting that one, and it just blasts them off. A third method of control is you can use a spray that you buy, and that would be something that is considered a natural spray like an insecticidal soap, a horticultural oil, or a neem oil. You can buy them already pre-mixed in a spray bottle, or you can buy a concentrate and mix it up yourself. And which one you choose is up to you. Most plants you can spray. Just be sure and check to make sure that the plant you have can handle a spray. And uh, the, the last way, the last method I've used is a homemade spray. And I'll leave a couple of recipes for you in the blog post. But the one I like is a combination of dish soap or Dr. Bronner's uh, white vinegar and a little bit, bit of oil. Now, if you choose a spray as the method to get rid of your mealybugs or aphids, you are going to probably have to spray more than one time. So you want to spray either at a 7 to 14 day uh, interval, depending on what it says on the bottle, or if you use a homemade spray, probably every 10 days. Now, on to mealybugs. I don't have any plants that have mealybugs, but I have. They are very common. Um, they are very common pests that um, infest house plants. And when I was growing up, we had a greenhouse, and we had a three-foot jade plant in our greenhouse that we would take out every summer and put by our pool. But when it was brought um, back in the greenhouse, it would always get it would always get mealybug. So I would uh, mix a solution of one quarter vinegar, uh, one quarter, excuse me, white quarter, one quarter rubbing alcohol to three quarters water, and I would take a Q-tip and I would dab, dab off, and I would dab that on top of the mealybug to get rid of it. Yes, it was very tedious, but for some reason I didn't mind doing it. And mealybug is something that likes to hang out in the crevices and the nodes of the plant or where the new growth is coming out to. It'll just like nestle on in there. And it looks like little puffs of cotton. It's a little bigger than a pinhead, but if you see a cottony thing, a uh, cottony substance on your house plants, it is most likely mealybugs. And mealybugs attack like all parts of the plant, and they can actually be in the root too, because um, I've seen quite a few plants that have a root mealybug. And mealybug is a lot slower moving than aphids. They just sort of, I, aphids move around a lot. You can see them. I, if they're not sucking on something, they'll be up and down all over. Whereas mealybugs are like, they just tend to stay in the spot they're in, so they're easy to identify. Now the control for mealybugs is pretty much the same as the control for aphids, except that alcohol, a homemade spray of alcohol and water works well on mealybug. You can also mix that as a spray too, 
and really spray it. Um, again, I've sprayed Mealybug off with the hose and it's worked really well too. But if yours is inside and you have a little bit of a bad infestation, then you're gonna have to spray with something. Okay, so I'm gonna do a quick recap. Aphids love fresh new growth. Mealybugs love the crevices and the nodes. Aphids tend to move around more. Mealybugs are, just tend to hang out where they are. Both of them are underneath the leaves, so be able to check, so be sure to check there too. Keep your eye out for them, and uh, if there's an infestation, get on it, get on it right away, because if it gets carried away, then it's much harder to get rid of because of the fact that they constantly lay eggs. If the leaves are sticky and black, then that means there has been a sugar excretion and that is the sooty mold, so it means there is an insect in it. If you can't see it, it's probably under the leaf or in the node, so be sure to check there. And also, keep your eye open for them in the spring. More details on aphids and mealybugs will be waiting for you in the blog post. The link will be down below. It'll also be on our website, joyousgarden.com. So I hope you have found this video to be useful and I thank you for all your likes and your comments and your subscribes. I really appreciate them. Now I'm going to get out in the garden and make the world a more beautiful place and I hope you do too. As always, I thank you so much for watching and up next in the plant pest saga is, well, what am I doing next? I'm doing white flies and spider mites. Ooh, how exciting. Bye.